Bored. Let's have a party. What kind of party? Pretty girl party. Okay. Pretty girl, it's time for bed. Day of the model. Pretty girl shit. Bitch, that's that pretty girl shit. Get on your pretty girl shit. You want your pretty girl shit? Stay on your pretty girl shit. They love that pretty girl shit. Bitch, you a pretty girl shit. Get money, pretty girl. We on that pretty girl. Bitch, that's that pretty girl shit. Get on your pretty girl shit. You want your pretty girl shit? Stay on your pretty girl. They love that pretty girl. Bitch, you a pretty girl. Get money, pretty girl. We on that pretty girl shit. They mad, they got they mamas mad too. If they only knew. The shit you have to do From sun up to sun down I run around running wheel shit Don't never stop I'm worldwide Bitches hungry And they like to buy my stop Too bad that I'm flexible When I am very versatile You can never stop me now Something like the gingerbread Try and catch me if you can Had to stick to the plan B You good love No I don't want your man I want you Never ever could you ever be me And I never wanna be another bitch Disrespectfully Then I hate a boo you lost Cause love free Best you bitches think twice if you tryna cross me, you be the bitches on my seas. I like to call them sesame. Gas on the leaf got me flying with the birds. I'm bothered do with me. Don't wanna hear about what you heard. It's apparent they addicted, can't resist it. This shit is unprecedented. It's just that pretty girl. Get on your pretty girl. You want your pretty girl? Stay on your pretty girl. They love that pretty girl. Bitch, you a pretty girl. Get money, pretty girl. We on that pretty girl. It's just that pretty girl. Get on your pretty girl. Been a hater, favorite topic. Another mad bitch jealous. Say my name, get calling. No coffee, no pop, but yet my name brewing. At the five o'clock, ain't no telling what I'm doing. Never ever bow down or kiss ass. Brush up nuts and bitches bubbles. Best revenge is your cash. Screaming why in FA, you will never find another. No second chances, pretty girls make new arrangements. Give a fuck about your feelings, that ain't never paid the bills. Put the money in my hand so I can show you how it feels. This nigga thirsty on the wheel. Shit, it make them give it up Don't say it to my face, it ain't respected Blocked it, rejected it, no signature Return to sender I'll never, ever, ever address it Pretty girl shit This is that pretty girl Get on your pretty girl You want your pretty girl Stay on your pretty girl They love that pretty girl Bitch, you a pretty girl Get money, pretty girl We on that pretty girl This is that pretty girl Get on your pretty girl You want your pretty girl Stay on your pretty girl They love that pretty girl Bitch, you a pretty Hey everyone, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Wheel, and this is episode 620. Yeah, it's been, it is so crazy right now. Apparently, I had started recording or whatever and it would let me work on how i usually do things so i'm doing this on for here off of instagram but tonight we got a special guest by the name of miss dayla the model so we're gonna bring her back on the platform and see what she got to say and we gonna just have fun we're gonna chop it up we're gonna laugh and this and that so i'm just waiting for her to arrive and see what happens Crazy. Never ever bow down 
wanna kiss ass. Brush up nuts and bitches bubble. Best revenge is your cash. Screaming why in FA, you will never find another. So we played the waiting game. <laughs> Yo, shout out to everybody. Shout out to the people that's rocking with me, that subscribe to me. No, for real. It was it's dope. Okay, there we go. Yo, hey, I gotta fix my lash. This mug coming off. I really wish we could have went live on um Facebook. Hey, Listen. yeah, it's all good. You know, people coming. You know, your people coming. So it's all good. We still got some viewers. Yeah, first of all, let's talk about. The controversial status you made the, the other day. Yeah, let's talk about it. So, how you and why and how you feel about that? Like, let's get it that crap. Okay, what's up? Okay. So, what I said was, why are black black men? Why are y'all? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. I, what I can hear you. I said was, black men. Why are y'all so difficult? Nobody could answer the question everybody want to throw it off on women oh black women uh, because you guys are difficult duh, 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 duh. what up tracy what up rich first of all at the end of the day my question was never answered and black men y'all are very difficult y'all make everything harder than what it needs to be and then y'all like my thing is i love black men so I'm not saying it in a way of trying to down or, you know, I just really want to know what the fuck. <laughs> Why are you so difficult? Well, because we live in a world that's difficult with us. Living in a world. Maybe somebody should write a song about it because that's not a that's not an excuse. That's not a good reason it's not a reason or an excuse it's a um, testimony like we go through hell like we go through a lot whether y'all know it or not you have well you all have a privilege of black oh. women black women have a privilege y'all y'all think so how we got a privilege because the way the system is, systematically, you you all pretty much can, you know, get the better jobs, get the better education. And, and what you talking about? I'm talking about black women, sisters, you guys. Y'all can, y'all can, y'all, y'all, well, they will allow y'all to excel a whole lot more than us. Because it's been like that for a long time. And, and it's not because of that we lazy and that we don't want to do anything, that we don't want to work, and that we are mentally and physically impaired. But it's just how white supremacy set up. So... Oh. I feel like the way, the, the difficultness that y'all are, or the difficult ways that y'all have, it has nothing to do with anybody but y'all. I feel like it's a lot of insecurity within black men, and I feel like black men need to be more confident, and I feel like black men need to be more um, sure about themselves, because if y'all was more sure about yourselves, then y'all wouldn't really care. Like, me personally, I don't really care about what nobody got to say you know what i'm saying but it's, i i feel like as a as black men y'all really y'all care about opinion too much when y'all shouldn't care about somebody's opinion y'all should just do y'all and y'all feel like and this is just my opinion okay yeah and i feel like y'all yeah. i feel like i'm not downing y'all let me just put that out there because don't come for my head because i do know how to fight <laughs> but anyway i just feel like i wish that y'all could be more let me put a filter on hello <laughs> yeah I really, yeah do you 
I really wish that y'all could be more like confident because I feel like if y'all were, then a lot of y'all decisions would be better even when it comes to like y'all dating like y'all, you know what I'm saying, settling down with a woman. Y'all don't want to settle down with a woman because y'all too busy not sure of or giving them too much leeway. Yeah, true. And and I feel like y'all don't want to settle down because y'all not sure about yourself. So y'all don't know if y'all want to settle down with a woman, with this particular woman that you know you love, when you know you love this woman. It's like y'all rather make it hard for the woman. And it's like not even knowing, you know what I'm saying, the sacrifices that the woman even do for, for the love she have for you. You know what I'm saying? Like... And that's what I mean by y'all so difficult. Like, y'all can go in the store and know what type of shoes y'all want to buy. But when it comes to black women, y'all make things so hard with us. And I don't understand it. And then y'all go get a, a woman from another race and treat her like the queen of, um, what, what's this state? What's this world? I mean, what's this, uh, <laughs> what's this country called? America. America. United States. Call it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, why you can't treat your black queen like that? Like, why you... And no shade to the other races. I love everybody. No shade. This is just my truth. This is what I think. You know? And that's why I say, why y'all so difficult? Oh, um, man. I have such a nice rebuttal with that. Because, number one, we lack confidence because half of us, a huge majority of us, wasn't raised by our fathers coming up even if we did have a father in the house like he barely talked to us because he was damaged and he was destroyed by the world and stuff like that because i can only speak for myself i can only speak for my experience but my experience comes from a whole lot of young black males so i can only say like for me being fatherless for 25 years, yes, I lack confidence because of the fact that I didn't know where I came from. I didn't know where he was. I didn't know what he was doing. I heard stories, you know what I'm saying? And when you hear your mother talk about your daddy ain't shit and this and that, like it does something to you, you know what I'm saying? It hurts your feelings, it breaks your heart. Then you knowing that, damn, I may end up like my father and stuff like that so it makes a young black male don't want to try because he has been shot down and beaten down before he gets to enter into society and then two we have been hurt so many times because we black what no no i I ain't saying nothing i ain't saying y'all but but i'm just giving you my perspective so you will understand from my perspective and and a lot of us were one woman man until we got hurt until we got cheated on because i'm gonna just i'm gonna just keep it real like a lot of us fell in love with hoes you know what i'm saying we fell in love with the flipper and stuff like that <laughs> you know what i'm saying and we didn't know at the time you know what i'm saying we was green and this and that we didn't know the game because at the end of the day it's a, it's a game you know this game called life you know what i'm saying and we we just all trying to you know beat the or finish the final level of the game which is marriage, which is kids, which is foundation, which is stability. That's all it is. It's exactly. a game. But That's why I say y'all difficult right there. Because at the end of the day, Peter or Paul or Billy is not gonna be like, Oh, my last girlfriend cheated, so I'm not gonna marry this girl because I know I love her. I know I love love her i'm going to go ahead and settle down we're going to get married we're going to have 700 credit scores or better and we're going to build a family and a foundation together see what i'm saying it's like if 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 the mindset changes a lot of stuff can happen in a positive way but if the mindset is well i'm gonna just dwell on my past and not really you know achieve higher heights and mentally 
weeks. See what I'm saying? It's like it's a mindset thing. And that's the thing. It's like maybe it's because y'all are overthinkers. Maybe y'all overthink everything and y'all feel like every, every, every woman ain't the same. First of all, and black women has been hurt so much. Black women go through so much to the point where it's like crazy the way that we get treated. And yeah, y'all can say, oh, y'all carry yourself like this. Y'all wear this. Y'all wear that. So what? We don't wear nothing different than the other races. At the end of the day, we deserve respect. And this ain't even about a respect thing. It's just the fact of y'all make things harder for us being so difficult. Like, I don't get it. And that's that's why I asked that question on Facebook. Why are black men so difficult? So elaborate on, like, the difficult part. So is it like just... Is, is it a, a psychological thing or emotional thing? No. Financial? Y'all yeah, just difficult. It's like, I don't understand it. Like, y'all rather do things the hard way instead of doing things logically and also coming to an agreement on stuff. Like, instead of, of trying to be my man and hacho and huncho all the time and trying to prove that you're hard and all of this shit it's like um, oh my goodness why the fuck y'all so difficult why y'all can't just be like you know what you right i'm gonna shut up you right i'm gonna shut up but instead it's an argument or a, a battle of who right and who wrong instead of what's right for the situation. Okay, but sense. I'm just... <laughs> kind of, sort of. But I'm just really just trying to get to, like, the understanding of, like, so you pretty much want... Like, instead of having a family, uh -huh. y'all rather sleep around instead of doing what's right. Y'all rather do the opposite. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it for real. Like, it, it just... Y'all make things harder than what it needs to be, I feel like. But it's... But it goes both ways, though. I, I, and, and no disrespect, I feel like you're being very dismissive. Because well, women, like, women ain't innocent, man. <laughs> women, women is... Um, not innocent in one bit like uh, no i ain't saying women is and we talking about i said why black i I, specific, I had a specific audience i said black men yeah so what women are you talking oh. about because it's a lot of women oh you know the ones i'm talking about just the ones that be you know out here talking about niggas niggas ain't shit and Oh, I don't want to fuck with a broke nigga. So it goes both ways. You know I what mean, I'm saying? Every I feel like that's just having standards. That's not being difficult. And like she said, we feed off the energy. So the thing about it is the energy that we give, we reciprocate. We reciprocate in, in multiple, uh, uh, tenfold. Mm -hmm. So, if you treat a woman in a good way, as she's supposed to be treated, you're going to get that back times 100. Because as women, we are naturally nurturers. We're naturally, you know, lovers. We're not, that shit just natural to us. So, if we're getting the right treatment, you're going to get treated as a king. But we don't. Majority of the time. Because you're so difficult. Well, can I answer um, that question? Mm -hmm. Well, I never was treated like a queen. Well, like a king. <laughs> even though I was treating her like a queen, you know. I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired over here. I can't really think straight. I'm but, tired too. I kind of got a headache. You know, what I was saying is I, I was never treated like a king when I was treating her like a queen. Wrong and, girl. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? But I don't... Were you treating her like a queen or do you think you were treating her like a queen? Oh, I was. Because I don't let anybody in my apartment when I'm not here. 
alone. That doesn't mean that you're treating her like a queen. No, but listen, though. you treating her like a queen. But listen, though, like, when a man trusts you, when a man loves you, that's like the number one test and, and um, goal and anything. Because you, you know how y'all like to, you know, um, snoop through things and, and investigate and all that other stuff. But when a man loves you with his prized possession, which is his castle, which is his crib, which is his domain, then that's love. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just letting you know from a man's standpoint, like we, it's hard for us to trust anybody because we've been hurt by the, especially the people that we love the most. We've been hurt so many times by family, by friends, by co workers, by colleagues, by associates. Like it's hard. Us too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not negating that. But what I'm trying to say is, is just that. You know, we are messed up, you know, as a whole. But me personally, I actually took the time out to get therapy, to get counseling and to really get some help and, and to grow. You know what I'm saying? I really matured over the years, you know what I'm saying? And I can hold myself accountable for being promiscuous and being rude and being careless and this and, this and that because I didn't have no identity towards myself i didn't have a purpose yeah but i do now and to 620 episodes later i really have been shaping and molding the city but i can't do this alone i can't do this by myself and one man can't change the world you can ask dr king and malcolm x i, I can't ask them but i wish i could All right, but, uh, but what I'm saying is, you know, so mm -hmm. they got they got killed for trying to help and change people. Yeah. Certain things you can't change. But you know Certain what I, she's I heard? I heard Martin Luther King was set up. Yeah, they all they, they all be set up by like they friends and the people that are closest to them. They always set them up like that. And anytime anybody's trying to change something, they go get killed. They gonna try, yeah, 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 just like Dr. C. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, so, and it's oh, crazy because his truth already out. So y'all ain't really stopped nothing. Y'all just kind of stopped him from putting out more information, but it's like the information already out. So. But yeah, no, I feel what you said. I, I really, I was just playing when I made that status. So it was a joke. Uh, but I, I was <laughs> laughing because I knew I was trolling. I was trolling and I knew that uh, I was going to get some, some feathers ruffled when I said it. That's part of the reason why I said it. Because mm -hmm. trolls, you know, sometimes I need it. No, I'm just kidding. But I honestly feel like as a black woman, I would love to see black men evolve with black women. I would love to see black men and women evolve together. Not saying nothing towards anyone else. I want everybody to evolve, but I feel like as a black woman, I would like to see black men evolve way more and believe in themselves way more, have way more confidence. Damn the fact that, you know, not saying that it ain't serious or it's not trying to minimize how you feel but damn the fact that your dad wasn't around damn the fact that you ain't had the best upbringing damn all of that overcome all of that and walk over that shit and become the best you period men and women yeah. black or brown or white or yellow it don't even matter everybody needs to do that because it's like certain things be held like a um Held. I don't even know what the words I'm looking for. I'm tired as fuck. But certain things are held as like a crutch. Yeah, crutch. When really you can use it to like a trampoline. Jump off that shit and, and use it to overcome. Yeah, it's a crutch. Thank you. And it's like overcome that shit because that's not who you are today it just helped mold who you are 
and it's something that can help you to become better so you know when you got kids and you have kids i'm not gonna do my kids like that i'm not gonna be an absent parent when i have my kids you know what i'm saying like use it to a to a advantage instead of using it as a disadvantage and that's with anything you know what i'm saying even for those who have been like touched and all of that shit use it to your advantage and use it to help the next person you never know why god wanted you to go through what you went through you feel me and use it to help write your story and not to hold you back or to make you feel like oh i can't do this because this happened to me or i can't do that because yeah like just use it to become a higher version of yourself if that makes sense like period <laughs> and don't be so damn different <laughs> well i can only speak for myself i don't think i'm difficult no I, I, I was just talking shit. no That's but no but i just feel like now that i'm older and i was fortunate to make it to the age that i am i use a lot of discernment now you ain't and even old I said older, not old, but I said that I just use a lot of discernment, common sense, discipline, and because I can say that now, I really think before I act, and I, and I, and I also avoid people that's no good for me, because if i feel like this if you hanging around people who ain't on the same motion as you you shouldn't even be around them and we'd be so scared and afraid to let people that, go and a fact now we could touch on that for mm -hmm. sure because baby let me tell you something one thing about me my friend tends to tell you i don't talk to my friends every day i don't talk to my, my friends I don't call people I don't know it's it's like when you on a journey this journey is personal you know and you could call and check up on people and it ain't nothing wrong with that stuff like that but when it comes to all of that childish shit I'm not I'm very childish first of all let me say that but <laughs> when it comes to what I want to do in life it's not up for negotiation mm -hmm. so it's like either I get on it and do that hold on there's something in my eye Ooh, I gotta do it I gotta get on it and I gotta do it for me and mine because everybody out here doing everything for them and theirs so it's nothing personal like people gotta understand like you can't live your life trying to hold on to everything you gotta learn how to let go out with the old in with the new you know of course. but I say that at the same time but I do like I do forgive people and I do let people back in my life but when it comes to what I want to do, nobody's going to get away in the way of that. So if it's, for instance, if I had a boyfriend and he didn't want me to do shows, and I would have to get another boyfriend. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to get in the way of my journey and what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you got to want what's best for me as I want what's best for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And that's just that. And if you my real friend, you're going to understand. Like, oh, okay, I know. It's something in my eye, y'all. Oh, okay, I know that she busy. You know, she'll call me. Ain't no love lost. It ain't nothing. Like, I got a best friend. We barely even talk, but that's my baby. Like, we locked in. You know what I'm saying? Forever. We say always and forever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if you can't understand that, then you got to get the fuck on respectfully <laughs> yeah you know it's crazy because that's where i'm at right now because i can't find a woman who will understand this because i have women over here while i did my shows and interviews and stuff and they see who i'm talking to like on the other side of the um, living room because they watching and stuff and they be like, oh, she bad, she pretty and stuff like that, you know? So I just, I can't control anyone else's insecurities for my own, 
You know, I can't control how someone's reaction or someone's jealousy and stuff like that. Because I'm doing a job. Because if I was up to something, you wouldn't even be here. You know, if I was hiding anything. And it just be difficult because I can't find anyone who would, like, support me. Or just look at this as a job. Because they only looking at it from the outside but they don't see the work i put in so when i'm editing videos and yeah. setting this stuff up it takes a lot of my time yeah but only time i can say that i would have that would be available it's probably like late at night yeah and they sometimes they would be asleep or They'd be upset, like, oh, you couldn't call me and stuff like that. And and I like to be I focused. You, you ain't sad enough, bro. You gotta move around. I mean, yeah, I, I'm going to. Like, don't don't get it twisted. Like, I'm I got some plans I'm, coming up, but you. So I ain't getting twisted. I'm just telling you, like, you. The thing is, like, it's a lot of small minds in Saginaw, and I love my city and I love my people, but it is what it is. They very stubborn. They stuck in the box, and they probably looking at it like you trying to talk to her. You in her inbox, you know what I mean? When it's like, first of all, this is business. You see, it's business. It says on your on your caption, eighteen oh four show. Da 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 da. Yeah, but right. Yeah, you gotta find somebody on the same vibrations as you. Yeah, and it's difficult because I do give everyone a chance. I do. Um, treat everyone the same i give everyone the benefit of the doubt <laughs> sometimes but it's just i'd rather be with somebody who's an entrepreneur like myself because an entrepreneur understands another entrepreneur and that's a fact and it's just nowadays you can't just have a job up and that's it you know what i'm saying but you have to you have to dream more you have to think big and i think big shoot i talk to ho people in hollywood you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. I, I know i'm destined for great things but i need to have someone real like she don't have to be in the spotlight or she don't even have to you know have the same amount of fame as me just be there you know what i'm saying when i need you you know when the world decide to kick me down or one day i'm in the shade room i'm gonna need somebody to hold me and yeah. tell me like fuck them baby you the man i got you you know what i'm saying so you that's what i need shade room you made it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, but i i want to make it for the right reasons they, but other than that they put people in there for the right reasons yeah they just people for doing good stuff too of course i feel you for sure, for sure for sure nobody wants to blow up off some bullshit no. but i mean no, I'm me i know uh, um my home girl <laughs> she went viral her uh dancer some tissue had came out of her dancer pants oh my gosh y'all it was crazy but she went viral <laughs> and it wasn't her <laughs> hey tobias what's up boo? <laughs> Yeah, so it was crazy, but nah, facts though. Yeah. And I'm rooting yeah. for you, and I'm proud of you. And I just want to tell you, like, keep going and keep staying consistent with what you're doing because you're doing a good ass job, right? Period. Hey, pretty face, Jasmine. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Same here, and I'm glad you back into the music and stuff. So I never left. I just took a break because I had to get my life situated i had some stuff going on and home comes first so i had to get my home balanced and it's like i had to realize it'll never be perfect it'll never be you know what i'm saying so it's like you just gotta learn how to balance and i had to learn how to balance you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like everything being a mom and being an entrepreneur being an artist and just everything having to work a job because i damn sure don't want to work no nine to five i hate it so mm -hmm. much yeah at the end of the day i gotta do something until i'm able to do what i want to do you know yeah. and i just gotta keep pushing so i'm excited i got some shit that i'm working on and i'm i'm excited 
It's fuck. And it may not even be this year when it happens. It may happen next year when I put it out or whatever. You know, but I got some shit that I'm working on. And I got a confidence brunch coming up March 23rd. It's going to be in um, Texas. Now, I'm working on a location. I do have my flyer already made. I just need to put a location on there. It's March 23rd from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And it's a brunch. Okay. I think that's the time. I'll send you the flyer, though. And if you can come, you should come. You should come, for sure. I have 10 steps of confidence that I personally use for myself that I want to instill into others. That's why I said that about black men and confidence. I want other, like black men and women, hey K, period. I want black men and women to be more confident about themselves, not just blacks. I want men and women to be more confident about themselves, point blank period. And I got 10 steps of confidence, and I might as well go ahead and put it into make it an ebook of some shit, you know? Yeah. I already, an audio book, because I already did the recording of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then I'm going, it's just going to be like a networking event. Everybody going to be networking with each other. I'm inviting people from Atlanta, people from New York, people from Michigan, everybody invited. And hopefully, everybody pull up because it's going to be dope for sure. So yeah. That's the show. It's called Day of the Model Presents Sis by Day of the Model First Annual Confidence Brunch. So I'm working on my eBright um event bright um you know the link and all of that. I mm -hmm. already did the description. I'm just real I'm like a, a big critic of myself. So I just have to go through it and see and make sure everything right before I put it out. But it's gonna slap. It's gonna be dope. So yeah. <laughs> you should come. Show sure reason to come to Texas. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I, I got enough PTO for Man, that. <laughs> fuck that. They better shut up. You better put in the day off. You got plenty of time to put in for that day off. Oh I know. I hear I hear you. Uh, trust me, trust me. I'm gonna um, figure something out Monday. I gotta. It's only awesome. lit. So come. But I always wanted to ask you this question. So, like, were, were you already like an artist here, and then you went down there, or you became an artist down there? Like, no. So let me tell you the, my backstory. Mm -hmm. So when I moved here, I wasn't doing nothing. I was just being a mom to my kids and working, being a worker, a worker bee, until I had an awakening. And my awakening happened in 2018. I went on a TV show with my best friend, Soraya, mm -hmm. Soraya Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Y'all make sure y'all fuck with her. She's very funny and talented. So anyway, she wrote this TV show. Uh, she reached out to them on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And she was like, um... Day Day, because you know, everybody called me Day Day before Day it was Day Day. Mm -hmm. She's like, Day Day, this producer gonna call you. Um, he gonna be asking you about questions. And I was like, huh? And she was like, yeah, I had uh, signed us up for this TV show. And I was like, what, nigga? What are you talking about? <laughs> and so she was like, yeah. She was like, so just tell him that we into it. We friends and you don't want to, uh, I don't know, we got to make up something. She was like, because we got to act like we mad at each other for something. I just told them that you mad at me or something. And I was just like, all right, fuck it. Everybody that know me know I'm very creative creative minded creative thinker all of that right mm -hmm. so the producer or the whoever he was he wasn't the producer he was like the person that's like um on the show who kind of like get the stories together mm -hmm. i don't know what they call it. so he was like um he called me and i'm thinking like this craigslist this shit fake you know what i'm saying and so he was like, yeah, I was talking to Soraya, and she told me that you're mad at her. And I just wanted to know, you know, what's going on? I'm with the TV show, Face the Truth with Vivica Fox. It's produced by um, Dr. Phil. Da, da, da. I'm like, this nigga, I like a mother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, hey, Tina. And so, hey, Kane. Did I already say hey, Kane? I did. Hey, everybody. What's up? So, anyways, yeah. So, 
I'm like, this nigga long like a motherfucker. So I'm just making up some shit. And so he like, um, yeah, so what's going on? Why are you mad at Soraya? And I was like, well, I'm mad at Soraya, and I'm thinking about her not coming to my birthday party this year. I have a birthday party every year. My best friends always come, and da da da, da just going on and on, just making up shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. If y'all watch it, face the truth, it is what it is. Y'all got finesse, but we love y'all, and I appreciate y'all. <laughs> For sure. We actors. This is what we do. We actresses. We have to do this. So anyways, um, I was like, yeah, I'm, I mean, because Soraya owed me money and she been posting on in, on the internet with money and how she getting her nails did. Hey, Kay, what's good? Um, and she was like, um, I was like, yeah, she been posting on in the internet how she getting her nails did and she going shopping and she owed me money and she hasn't paid me back yet. And, um, I just don't want her to come to my birthday party this year. And so he was like, okay. So he kept calling me back, like, tell me more. Tell me more. What else did she do? And I was just like, bro, what the fuck? Like, you study want to dig deeper. Like, I'm study having to come up with shit. And so I was like, yeah, well, she scratched my car. She, um, we were out. And hey, Marky D. I was like, we were out and she put a scratch on my car. And he was like, Oh no, she she messed up your car? And I was like, yeah, she messed up my car. And she ain't paid for it, talking about my bad. And so all of that, <laughs> right? So they ended up picking our story for the show. Mm-hmm. All right? So, so they flew us to L.A. All, all expenses paid. They got, uh, I flew Delta. I felt like a, what? Could tell me shit. Hold up, I'm flying Delta? I'm <laughs> for free. <laughs> and so, boom, they got me a, a hotel at the Roosevelt Hollywood in um, L.A., mm-hmm. right across from the, the star. Um, the, I can't think of what it's called. It's The stars are on the ground. Though. Oh, a ho- What's a, a Hollywood yeah. Walk of Fame. Yeah, that. So, I, my hotel was right across the street, like, from that. And so, um, the first day I got there, I did B-roll. And then they had took some pictures of me, and then I did a little, you know how Jerry Springer shows be having the people talking shit like, yeah, cause behind the scenes before the show, uh-huh. and that type of shit. And so I was like, okay, period. And then we went to the back, and they had my name on the on the um dressing room. I had a makeup artist do my makeup, a professional makeup artist that do other celebrities makeup and all of that to the point where it was everything was paperwork signing signatures like the makeup artist couldn't even tell me her information type shit mm-hmm. you feel me yeah so i'm like wow this is really happening all from my friends submitting us to a damn tv show right mm-hmm. so boom we did the tv show they gave us a free trip to jamaica all expenses paid and the TV show was so funny. We were so high. We had some edibles. This is around the time that we had just got legalized or whatever. And it, we was in Cali. So, you know, they got the best shit. So, we was off edibles during the show. It was mm-hmm. funny as hell. You got to check it out. The uh, trailer is on YouTube. And it's viral as hell. But anyway, boom, that happened, right? 2018. Mm-hmm. When I came from the show, me... Soraya and my other best friend, Tracy, we all had uh, met up in Houston, and we all came up with our alter egos. And I was Daya, Treya, and Soraya. Mm -hmm. She just changed her spelling. So, boom. I was like, y'all, like I just told everybody, I'm about to start modeling. I want to start modeling. Everything I say I want to do, I pursue it. So, I hit up this uh, group. It was a promotion group. It's called Stars of Dallas. Boom. Stars of Dallas called me. I'm giving you the scoop, so I need you to wake up. I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening. So, (laughs) Stars of Dallas called me. Well, we was uh, texting on Instagram. I seen what they was doing, and I was like, oh, I want to be a part of this, and this would be a perfect way for me to start modeling. And so I hit them up, and I was like, hey, I'm interested in working with y'all. I'm an aspiring model. I want to model. And so, boom, went to one of their meetings, took my sister with me, dragged my sister with me. She didn't want to go. <laughs> dragged my sister with me. Uh-huh. And then, boom, I started my modeling. I started going to fashion shows. I was going to um, plays, talking to actresses. I met Rudy Huxtable doing that. 
had an um, interview with Ru Rudy Hux Huxtable. It was other people too, but I forget because it was years ago and I kind of forgot, you know, over the time, but by doing so much. And so, boom, after a year or two of me modeling, going to fashion shows and stuff, I was talking to one of my homegirls. We had became really close. Her name Pretty Lou. She a model here too. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, pretty little. Uh, we were just driving down the road on the highway going somewhere. I don't even know. Probably to a video shoot. And so I was like, I want to start rapping. And she was like, bitch, you should do it. Just do it. And I was like, yeah. I think I'm I'm, I'm going to tap into that. And so out of nowhere, she got booked for a video shoot in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Shout out to Pretty Blue. And so when we was in Baton Rouge, she was like, you should come with me. And I was like, okay, bet. Me personally, when I pack, I pack a whole bunch of shit, right? Mm -hmm. Just in case type mm -hmm. shit. So we get to Baton Rouge. I end up flying in. They was already there. And so, boom. The dude who was the manager of the artist who the video she was in was like, hey, y'all know any female rappers? I'm looking for a female artist. She was like, she rap? I was like, bitch. I, I just said I want to start. I ain't say I started now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, this was, was this during COVID? It had had to be during COVID. It was right after COVID. It was like 2020, I want to say. It had to be. Yeah, it was 2020, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, he was like, you rock? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, he was like, all right, bet. We're going to go to the studio. And then if y'all make a song, that, if you can make a song and I like it, we're going to do a video tonight. And I was like, what? Tonight? I'm like, I'm so glad I brought all these clothes. I brought different wigs, all type of shit. Stop playing. <laughs> and so, and so, uh, uh, and like, let me let me give you more of a backstory. I've been around music my whole life. I was in singing lessons as a child, coming up, piano and singing, classical music and stuff like that. I just didn't want to sing because I don't want to sing. Like, I'd rather rap, and I always used to freestyle. Always just playing around, being drunk, whatever, you know, just having fun with it because it's fun mm. to me. It's, mm. it's something that I love. And so, boom, fast forward. Now that I gave you that little insight, fast forward, right? Right. We in Baton Rouge, we go to the studio. Um, it's Dizzy, he made a beat. It, it's Dizzy YZ, I think that's his IG. Okay. He uh, made the beat, he cooked the beat up right there while we was right there. Cook the whole beat. You know my song, Drop? Yeah. Drop, drop, that song. He cooked that beat right there. Shout out to Hot Boy Tiff. Hot Boy Tiff and also 843 Youngin. I don't even think he rapped no more. I don't even know. We lost mm. touch. But anyway, so boom. He cooked the beat up. And so as he was cooking the beat, I was writing my verse. This is my first verse I've ever written. I used to write music. Like songs, singing songs, mm -hmm. not rap, right? So boom, boom. Soon as I heard the beat, it was like he was like drop, cause High Boy Tef made the hook. He was like drop, 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 and I was like, all right. He liked the way I drop. I'm going to the top. If I was dancing then, bitch, I'm doing the Millie Rock. I bust it on the spot, like you know, just that you could tell, like that's my first song. You could tell because the way I'm rapping, you know what I'm saying? Sound like sexy, because <laughs> I love her. That's my baby. Uh -huh. But you see what I'm saying? And so yeah. that was my very, very first song, very first time writing a rap besides freestyling in the wheel. What's up, Power Two and Four? And so, boom, that's how I started doing music. And it was just something that I wanted to do, and God made a way for me to be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no doubt. And then I created my brand, and so it just, I just do everything. Thing that I want to do, I make an effort toward doing it. Like I told myself, I was I was wearing what waist waist trainers yeah. every day. 
promoting their shit every day to the point where me and what waste was texting each other on instagram back and forth and i told was what waste company whoever run their page i can go to the messages and screenshot it i said i want to have my own waist trainer company like yours and i created my own waist trainer company <laughs> you tired you need to get you some sleep <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it's all good. I'm, 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 I can still listen. You know, I'm okay. good. We, okay. Let's finish it. Yeah. Let's finish it. Knock but it yeah, out. So, so yeah, that's what happened. And so, I just started rapping this shit. And as I do more, like as I was doing my songs, I was just getting better and better and better. Every song I was doing, I was getting better and better. You know, like now I feel like. With me taking my little break off, I was still writing music. I'm in. A, I'm a part of an organization. It's called WSA Writing Sessions, Writing Session America. And shout out to the CEO Kevin Shine. That's my. He my mentor. He mm -hmm. keep me on my toes. He makes sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. He check in on me, and he's been in a, a part of the industry for over 25 years. He know he didn't work worked with R. Kelly, he didn't worked with Kanye West, he didn't worked with so many people and it's like he is basically saving me from the stuff that people have to go through in the industry mm -hmm. to be in the industry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And teaching the music business. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Cause just a whole other side to it than performing and chasing our chasing fans. You don't gotta do that. You know, it's a way that you can still do your music, do what you love, and be able to create, uh, generate uh, an income. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I met Kevin Shine through my dad. Shout out to my dad. He, um, I, he once he figured out I was ready to listen to people. Because, you know, when you first start doing music, can't nobody tell you shit. You just know you're going to blow up overnight. Hey sis, you know what I'm saying? You just know you're gonna blow up overnight. Mm -hmm. Name an artist that you know that don't feel like they finna blow up overnight. <laughs> Everybody feel like they gonna blow up or be the next sen sensation, but it don't work like that. Exactly. It takes time. Even Kanye West, it took Kanye like 15 years for him to be an artist of multi-selling artist you know what I'm saying millionaire you know even though like he was producing and stuff like that like no one took him serious so he had to prove himself but everybody has a rise and just like with my show it, it may be small right now but it's gonna be huge you know what I'm saying because my catalog is crazy you know just the people that I interviewed and the people that I met and I tell them everybody like it doesn't matter uh where you at or what you specify in you just have to build that audience you should just have to believe in yourself stay consistent and i stay consistent throughout my like, like problems like a lot of people don't know what i'll be going through i'll be going through some real shit because i'm not used to the the um attention now because it took me a minute to realize like hey why everybody following me in this store <laughs> you know i was just signing autographs one day i can't really go to the grocery store because there's gonna be somebody at that grocery store that's so recognizing yeah or just at work or at the store you know the liquor store or whatever they be like what's up 1804 and this and that everybody looking like man who the hell is that and i'm like oh shit. yeah <laughs> i forgot but I'm still getting used to that, but also I, I, I stay um, humble at the same time. Because hey, that's too, because it's like people have their rise and their falls, their rise and their falls, their rise. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to stay humble because at the end of the day, yeah, you might be up today, but tomorrow you might, you know what I'm saying? You might go through a little financial little situation or some shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Stay humble. Like when I go in rooms, I don't be like, "Oh, I'm dead a model," and da 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 da. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. People see by my aura, my energy, how I carry myself, what I look like when I come. They see. 
They know, oh, she confident. You could tell she confident by the way she walk. You could tell she confident because she got pink hair. You could tell that she, you feel me? It don't even, you don't even gotta know what I do. You gonna know that she, she must do something. You know, I don't say, say nothing because I feel like I don't got to. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, I don't know. I'd rather be humble. It look better. Being humble would be <laughs> a lot better than, and it's okay to be, be cocky though. Like on one of my verses, I said, uh, I said, can't be modest. Gotta be cocky. Can't be modest. Something like that, like you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, don't get it twisted. Just because I'm modest, it's like nowadays. My name is Daya the Model. I am an entrepreneur, indiepreneur. I'm an artist. I have a, I wear a hat, many hats. Mm-hmm. I have my own brand. It's called Sis. So I started something. I wanted a better body, so I started something. Um, I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. I live in Texas now, Arlington, Texas, Ag Town. And um, what else you want to know about me? I can tell you who I am. You can ask me. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Rico, crazy ass. Man, he's so funny. So shout out to Rico, man. That's my Rico, dog. Bro. No, Rico. but but yeah, I feel that for sure. Gotta be humble. And, and then, like, some people might know me when I walk in the room, but some people don't. So it's like I still haven't got there yet. You know what I'm saying? It's like I still got work to do. That's how I feel. Yeah. No matter what, I feel like I still got a lot of work to do. You know what I'm saying? I haven't dropped a song in two weeks, going on three years. Which isn't a bad yeah. thing. It's not a bad thing. But at the same time, I know it's time for some new music. But is it? I feel like it. I feel like um, a single or two would do. I feel like you know, it's to bring single, yeah, yeah. for sure. I, of I wanna, course. I want to come out with something for this summer for sure. Um, I got some stuff going like with my brand. I want to use my brand to push. My I want to use my music to push my brand. The brand is what's yeah. making the money. You know. Yeah, I'm surprised you ain't do a sis song yet. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> see, a, you see what I'm being? Demo. I did a demo for a sis song already. So I just, it's just a, a process and I want to do everything correctly this time. I want to make sure everything is copywritten. Everything is, um, I got the rights to everything or even the producer has the rights. It's not a, it's not a sample on the beat. All mm-hmm. of that stuff to where I can monetize it and it's not just me just doing some shit. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You know, you are very remarkable. You know? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just, I get like surprised how tall you are. Like <laughs> I forget how tall you are sometimes. How tall do you think like, I am? Like five nine, right? Yep. Yep, okay. Five, nine. It's funny. But I wear heels a lot, so really I'm like six feet. Six feet two when I wear heels. Oh. Well, you don't intimidate me. I'm six five, so <laughs> yeah, that's I, still, cool. I still tower over you, but it'd be crazy. Um, just um, the stages that we at now, because when we first did like the first episode that we did and stuff, you know, we was just talking about what was next. And, stuff and what like did that. I say? I need to watch that episode. Oh uh, shoot! It was it was a minute ago, but but we was just like you know manifesting things and stuff like that, and I really had reached um, half those goals. But I tell everybody that it's not a race. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about progress, and just like what we was talking about at the beginning of this interview is that everything is a progress progress you know what i'm saying and, and well it's a process to become progress and we ain't go win everybody over because first of all in order for change to come you gotta realize or recognize that it's a problem you know 
you got to realize that it's some things that you have to change and mm -hmm. it's some things that you have to improve on and it's i was fact. able and i was able to get this far just by staying in devoted to my brand and no day, day offs because i work every day practically um whether if it's my regular job or it's just, or doing this yeah and i don't re i don't really relax i don't really take breaks or anything like that i just if i'm not on camera i'm behind the scenes but i just tell everybody that um because they think I'm, I'm just knowledgeable in certain things but i just feed on what i do you know because I don't tell anybody something that I don't apply. So I just try to just tell everybody like, okay, if you rap, you know, you got to at least have some songs. You got to have some tapes. You got to have a um, producer, of course, you know, you got to have money for studio time. You got to spend gotta money have, to make money. Have some money. Yeah, pretty much. Or like a manager, of course, you know, get you some. But it's like, you gotta have how to, mm -hmm. to even need a manager. Yeah, they need to be have. They need to have something to manage. Like I had a manager. I had two managers, but I didn't need them because the first manager I feel like he kind of he was more than a manager to me. He was the person who opened the door for me to get started. You know, <laughs> and he did a lot for me. Like I was on Boosie page. I was on Kerwin the the comedian page like mm -hmm. he really helped push me yeah and i feel like, like he was more than a manager you know what i'm saying but it's like i feel like my career was slowed down for a reason mm -hmm. i feel like it was slowed down for me to learn what i needed to learn so that i won't get taken advantage of like other women yeah it's it's, it's, it's hard being a woman in the industry because everybody want to you know Take advantage of you. Use you for your goods. You you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna keep it PG-13 because my kids right outside. So it's like <laughs> yeah. And I've had a situation before, you know, where it was like, okay, this is going on and this happened, and it's like I don't want this, and it's like oh, well, I don't want to work with you if you don't want to be with me or. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, that's weird. Why would you want to be with somebody who don't want to be with you? It's weird. Yeah. Anyway, it's just the simple fact that I, I'm grateful for my career being slowed down. Because I, one thing I don't want to do is be famous and miserable. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be happy. I want to be wealthy. I don't want to just be famous. Like, no. I want to be wealthy. I want to be happy, healthy, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I feel like if I would have blew up back then, I probably wouldn't have the mental that I have now. I probably would be in a mental institution. <laughs> yeah. And, and, then, and then also, you know, you have to make sure that you are around for your kids. Of course, you know, because because I don't have any kids, so I can focus a lot more. I can navigate. I can maneuver a whole lot. So, hey, it's eleven eleven my way. Hello. <laughs> but one, but I'm doing all this for my kids someday and for my future wife because I don't want to have just this show or whatever at this particular level. So I want to get to the next level in order for myself to, you know, leave something behind for my son or daughter. Yeah. Or it's just my nieces and nephews or godson, like, cause this is being left to somebody yeah. and I'm prepping somebody, um, well, one of my nieces and stuff, cause she's very smart and talkative and very charismatic. And she's so cute and stuff. She's twelve. Her name Camille. She's so everything's okay with your niece. Mm -hmm. okay. Everything fine and stuff. But yeah, it's just I was just telling everybody like, cause I was just getting so many inboxes and and certain people genuine, and some people don't. Yeah. You know, they just nosy. But I just had just um 
told her, like, I'm not going to tell you to go home, but I want you to just be safe. I want you to be happy and stuff. You know, she's a teenager. She's 17. Oh. So I remember when I was 17. <laughs> I remember when I was 17. So. I was definitely outside. Ski! Because I graduated at 17. So mm-hmm. it was like, Ma, I graduated. Why are you still riding me? Like, let me do me. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. But I wasn't like not going home. I stay gone for like a couple days. Then I'll go home. Yeah. She's just. Um, at a crossroad right now because you know she feel like oh she don't know what she wants to do and stuff. But I told her everything will be all right. Just live life, you know. Just take it one day at a time. Cause, cause when I was younger, I was just out there being crazy, being wild and stuff. Cause that's when I have found me, you know, found my niche and stuff. But now at 36. I appreciate things a lot more. I appreciate just good friends and good people yeah. that's around me that wants me to succeed, not the ones who just want me uh, um, or want to be around me because of the things that I have accomplished. But I want the people who are gonna stick around if it don't work out. You know, be like, okay, that didn't work out. Well, I'm still here for you, just in case something else work out. But that's what it's about, just making sure that you find your purpose and find what you want to do and everything will be all right. And I'm here to support her, you know? I've always been there for her. It's just anybody, but I just tell people that you don't have to stick to one thing. You can do multiple things and and you are Jill of all trades and I'm a Jack of all trades just because I... I hope not. <laughs> Jane of all trades. Yeah, that's what I said. I said you a Jill of all trades. I don't want to be Jill. I want to be Jane. <sighs> Jane of all I said, you so uh, one, of my, one of my raps, I said, uh, I said, shout out to the brand. Now, you know we rock it, sis. I got a slim waist, pretty face, big hips. I hustle real hard. I'm a Jane of all trades. I'm going to stay away from gray areas, all 50 shades. On my shit today, so later on, I can chill. I follow my own lead. Girl, you still ain't stop with shit. Shop with sis. Scrolling on my page, lurking. You ain't buying shit. Get right to the point, girl. Why you stalking? What you want? I'm on their ass like plaid pants. I'm throwing rocks and hiding hands. My confidence, what they can't stand. It's crazy think I gave a damn. Girl, buckle down and work that plan. I'm just talking shit like telling people like you know what i'm saying fuck that shit yeah like shout out to my brand this is what i'm doing and i'm encouraging other people like work that plan you got it period hey you know what one of these days because i always wanted to just have like musical guests on my show one of these days you're gonna have to perform on one of my podcasts sessions and stuff like that you're gonna have to do that one of these days oh so when i get my new single when i get my new single i'm telling you this i'm will i will perform it on your show my new single see i've been pushing pretty girl shit still because i don't i'm not giving up on that song at all even if i do a remix remake it whatever i'm not giving up on pretty girl shit because it's an anthem it really is like it's it's a, it's, it's an empowerment song for me and I want it to be an empowerment song for others. So even if I got to rewrite it, hits are not written. They're rewritten. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that I, my dad, he told me that a long time ago. He was like, you got this. And so that's why I'm a part of an organization full of writers. I wrote that whole, that I wrote that myself. I still write myself because I'm independent. I like to do things on my own, on my own, you know, time and whatever. But at the same time i do have a team to go to and be like hey can y'all help me build this up make mm-hmm. this 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm in a cipher, and that's my uh, some of my cipher verse. It's not the whole thing, but it's it's only 16 bars, and so I didn't do the whole 16 just now. But and then I got one that's 12 bars that I'm about to do, just to get back out here, just to tap back. You know what I'm saying? Let people know. Okay, I'm. I never stopped. I just took a little break, but I learned a lot in the midst of me stopping. You know. And I'm not trying to be cute with it no more. I'm I'm trying to give jewels. I'm trying to give people something to hold on to. You know what I'm saying? Like, period. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. What I'm yeah. And then just the fact like you is mentioned as one of the best female rap artists in Dallas, and you from Saginaw. That means a lot. Where you see? Did I comment that? Well, I seen some type of list, and you was on it like some years ago. You, you never seen it? No. Really? That's crazy. Cause I seen it. I honestly feel like I'm working my way up again. I feel like I'm all the way at the beginning stage again, and I'm working my way up again. But it's cool. I, I'm good where I'm at because, like, on one of my verses, I'm like, I'm the fuck. I want to be the. I said, fuck being the hardest. I'd rather be the smartest because I want to be smart with it. I don't really too much care about being the hardest. You feel me? I just want to be smart with it. I want to make everything make sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but I, that's what's up, though. Like, that's what's up for sure. And I feel like even with me doing what I'm doing, being in the in Dallas, it's like, come on, like it's not a coincidence. You feel me? And I just feel like I just gotta continue to trust God and trust the process and trust everything and just keep pushing. Have confidence. Be confident. I am confident. You know what I'm saying? Wear it. Wake up. Breathe it. Smell it. Drink it. Eat it. Bop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you gotta be, you know, and 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 they will take that as arrogance, but hey, they don't know your story, you know, they don't know how hard you have to fight to get to this level, and and, and we all have a story, you know, to us. So I wish you nothing but the best, and I'm here to help you, whatever you need, like I. Promote you free, Bro. all that. You don't gotta pay me now. Yes, so. I appreciate you for sure, for sure. And you know, it's always the vibe every time, every time. Just like the last interview we had, dang, that was a while ago. I know. I told you like oh, three yeah. years ago, three months. Yeah, so. it was. That's when I was skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you shut up. You stupid, man. Shut up. That was yeah. Skinny. But I don't care though. I don't want to be skinny. Ha. No shame. No, no, you just mature. You know, you seasoned now, so it's all good. Right. You know. Uh, yeah, good. I ain't old. I didn't say that. I said you seasoned. That sound old. Is, mm. It's mature. Seasoned sound like old lady. Like, what kind of season? Is it lemon pepper or slap your mama with the the hot blend? No, you obey. Oh, no. Oh, no. no, no. <laughs> I'd rather be lemon pepper. <laughs> I'm just playing. Yeah. I'm but, just... yeah, you, you so crazy. But, yeah, I'm going to end this, sis. So, we going to... Um, do this another day, another day. It won't take years this time, but we're gonna have to do this like another um, few months or something. At least when you get your single out, you know what I'm saying? You can come on my show and promote and all that, that stuff, promote yourself again. Facts, 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 facts. Like I say, I'm pushing for this summer, but I know that it's, it's gonna take some time. So, and I don't wanna rush it, but I really, 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 really want to have it ready for the summer. I really do. I want it to be like a summer banger. I really do. And I'm pushing for it. Uh, but I know I got this confidence brunch. And then after the confidence brunch, I'm introducing uh, something that I'm, I can't say right now. And then I also, I'm also working on something else. It's, it's a movie. 
um that i'm getting together so i will be doing like casting for it and also you know just having other people come in and just do certain roles extra roles stuff like that i already know who i kind of want to be the main characters um but yeah it's up and it's stuck because the sky's the limit and they didn't let me come back yeah. to the city yeah. i moved away for a year and i came back and now i'm ready and i ain't you know i don't know i feel like, like i'm starting all the way over and it's cool it's a beautiful thing oh yeah the show, so thank you for having me it was a pleasure and i'm proud of you keep pushing keep keep everything going that you're doing and at the top that's what we're doing. We're going to the top. We ain't gonna never stop. Oh, no doubt. No doubt, no doubt. And you take care. Oh, no, hell no. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Oh, I, I just wanted to try that once just to see how it was. And you can't do it. No, it was like, I always wanted to have a song. So I just had went in the studio and just did it but it just wasn't for me because i didn't like my voice and stuff like that was it i still it, don't like my voice tell me huh? was it because you feel like you ain't get a lot of people to listen to it or was it because you just don't like it oh no no it's it it was good i had over 300 views and no dislikes on youtube so people was rocking with it but it just wasn't me, you know, and I have to know my limitations and nobody else does. Like, I have to, you know, focus on one thing. But I just wanted to try it out because I always wanted to just rap and do a, have a song. And it was successful. So I accomplished my goal. So, yeah, but you never know, you know, you might hear something like an unreleased track from me or something. You might, I might hear a little song. Did you like what I but, said in my verse, or do I need to go back? Yeah, go back. You don't like it. No, go back. What you talking about? No, you asking me? Some, you yeah, asking? what I just, what I just, what I said that I did for the cipher. I didn't. I didn't, I was just, I didn't see it. Um, no, I can, just wrapped it to you. I said, shout out to the brand. We rocking sis. Oh, you ain't. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yeah, that was tight. That was tight. You got it, or you got to record it? I got to record it. No, I ain't recorded it. No, I ain't oh. recorded it. I got to go to the studio on Monday <laughs> to record. And um, I already wrote the verse. I just be feeling like. Let me make this better. But I, 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 at the same time, I look at it like it's, a, it's just, it's a cipher. Like, yeah. focus, do that, and then do get your song. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't do too much. Like, it's cool. Do what you gonna do. Put that shit down. Deliver that shit well, and then focus on your single that you know you wanna do. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it's like that shit could be a distraction, and it ain't no distraction. It's 2024. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, though. It was a pleasure. I know you tired. And I know you want to get some sleep. I'm about to give me something to eat. I just got home. I told you what I was doing. I've been there all day. <laughs> I got up at 7 this morning. Mm -hmm. And I've been up since 7 this morning. And I left my house at 10 this morning. And I'm just getting back at 11. Well, 10. Whatever time I joined, I just walked in the house. I still got my coat on. Oh, we. Yeah, we had a long day ahead of us today. So, but yeah. Um, we, big chilling. <laughs> me too, me too. But yeah, like, we going to um, chop it up again. We going to have to make, like I said, we going to have to make sure that it's like in a few months. Let's not wait years this time, but yeah, it's always a pleasure and you enjoy your night. You. YouTube. Am I gonna see this on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna um, I'm see this on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Damn. I wish I was doing that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you play too much. <laughs> All I, right. I, Peace. I holla. <laughs> All Peace. right. Peace.